All right, let's get started. First of all, let's go into the world of financial statements. Yes, uh, KH, thanks for helping out Hong Kong. And, uh, you know, guys, Prince Chung Si, if you guys are there as well, please help out, please, please help out Hong Kong oh, via the WhatsApp as well. All right, so let's get started with financial statement. Now, what is a financial statement? Financial statement starts off with one thought in mind. At the end of the day, this is the best way that you and I as retail investors can do fundamental analysis. Now, why did I say at the start that we are not going to go through the full-fledged financial or fundamental analysis because it can be done in so many ways. Number one, we know that it can be done by analyzing financial statements. Number two, we can take the time to understand the management, you know, figure out what's their intention to run the business, to grow the business, attend AGM, speak to the CFO, talk to the analysts inside, uh, attend briefings by their IR investor relations. Or we can do a macro analysis on the entire sector to be really, really into the global trend, sector trend, sector news, the ins and outs of the sectors and the industries. And then to a certain extent, be able to predict the future company growth, which means you focus on valuations, you focus on a lot of things that is predictive in nature, which means you don't look into historical, you look into the future. All these, if you realize, Understanding management, you don't have the resources nor do you know how to get to them. You don't have access to the management. Macro analysis on sector or industries, unless you have a background in business, MBA or economics, it's highly unlikely that you can learn this skill set within the two or three months time. And then if you are predicting future company growth, what makes you so sure? that you know the industry well enough in order to predict the company growth. A lot of errors will be made. So at the end of the day, financial statements, in fact, to be exact here, analyzing historical financial statements is the best way we have as retail to approach fundamental analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, please write down in the chat T B C T B C I V P B C. Just write down P B C is fine. P and L balance sheet cash flow and go in that order. In fact, in the past, P B C was our S O P. We focus on the P and L first, and if the P and L passes the Stress test, then go to the balance sheet. It passes the test, goes to cash flow. And then once PPC is done, do the final few wrap up, go into an industrial analysis, and then do valuation. Simple as that. So when we talk about financial statements, we are literally talking about the only way that you and I as retail investors can focus and can do financial, can do fundamental analysis. Instead, we are not looking at fundamental analysis anymore because there are some other things we cannot do. We are basically doing financial analysis by looking into three things. The P&L, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statements, all of which can be found in an annual report. Annual report itself is not a financial statement, but it houses everything. So the director's report, the management's report, the auditor's report, the shareholder's analysis, the P&Ls, the balance sheets, and the cash flow statements, and all the auditor reports that come together with it, all the indices. So what does it look like? The P&L, the few key information will be there. Sometimes some companies have different words like sales, like turnover, like net income, sorry, like, uh, like uh, loan income, interest income, sorry. Interest income, non-interest income for banks. But otherwise, the key things when you see a P&L is always revenue, profit, etc. Write down, ladies and gentlemen, P&L, revenue, profit, 
when you see the word revenue, when you see the profit, you know you're looking at P&L profit and loss statements. P&L revenue profit. Christina Tan, good question, which we will answer later. Minimum five years, and I'll come back to that. And then when you go to the next one, which is balance sheet, you will always see again the same few words, assets, equities, liabilities. Uh, the most famous and popular ones would be assets and liabilities. Again, write down in the chat, balance sheet, BS, assets and liabilities. Every time when you see these two words, asset and liabilities, you know you are at a balance sheet section. BS, asset liabilities. And then finally, we have the cash flow. And don't need to write anything because the names are extra long here. When you see cash, cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities or financing activities, you know you are at a cash flow portion now. But the idea here is to make sure that you understand each and every one of these financial statements and how they can help you. Because they can help you if you really know where to look. Therefore, we will use this as our weapon, as our tool to navigate the rough waters of the stock market. So, like I said just now, Christina Tan, the best time to use or the time frame to focus on is five years. And then the idea here is to not just look into financial statements. These are all the raw data. These are the sources of your information. You also need to understand what is this thing called the financial ratios. Ladies and gentlemen, please write down financial ratios in the chat. Uh, term that yeah, we're going to continue using again and again and again later on, financial ratios. All right. Now, financial ratio is to take the data, just like your price data, you know, like your TA price data. But for now, that fundamental analysis, you have a lot more than price data. You have revenue data, you have profit data, you have earnings per share data, you have margin data, you have balance sheet assets, current assets data, you have accounts receivable data, you have cash conversion cycle data. All these data, they are all individual data. And then you are taking multiple of these data to compare them and come up with this thing called financial ratios. For example, some well-known example here is margin. Can someone please tell me margin is a financial ratio consists of what two data? What are the two data involved in a margin calculation? Can someone please tell me that? It's a pretty well-known one. I think most of you would know that margin is simply you take net earnings or net profit and divide by revenue, profit and sales. There you go. Okay, I'll come. Thank you. So at the end of the day, you know that out of all the one ringgit that you earn, how many in that one ringgit you are actually, how much in the one ringgit you are actually earning? 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents? That's 20%, 30%, 40%, and 50% margin. What PE ratio? Price to earnings ratio. It's a ratio in itself. Price divided by earnings per share. You take earnings per share. It itself is a ratio. You take all the earnings the company is making. You divide by the number of outstanding shares, the shares that the company has issued. You can calculate how much each share is worth in terms of its earnings. I earn 1 million ringgit. I divide by 1 million shares. Each share is worth 1 ringgit in earnings. You take that price of the share, divide by the earnings per share, 1 ringgit earnings per share. If let's say the share right now is trading at 5 ringgit, then you have 5 times P ratio, 5 divided by 1. You see, all these financial ratios or accounting ratios is basically used to get an insight into all these raw data. Just like your price data, which is OHLC, which is like your volume data. Now, instead of having a two-dimension data, you're looking at a multitude of data. 